Howdy. Welcome to the Old West Travelers YouTube channel. Today we're heading back to May of 1881 in Flagstaff, Arizona for today's true tale of the Wild West. If this is your first time here, I'm your host Scott Winchester and the Old West Traveler is all about true stories of cowboys and Indians, outlaws and lawmen, Native American lore, and more. And with that, let's get into today's story. Back in May in 1881, just outside of Flagstaff, Arizona, there was a stagecoach held up, but not just another stagecoach hold up. Nope. You see, the loot the bandits took was part of an inside job. The stagecoach had taken on several mailbags while stopped in Canyon Diablo Station. Two of them bags were so heavy, it took several men to load them into the boot of the stagecoach. The driver today of the stagecoach was Captain John Hance. Now, he was the first white European to live and work there at the Grand Canyon. After picking up the mail, Captain Hans was back on the California Santa Fe Trail when three unmasked bandits with their guns pulled came up alongside the stagecoach. Hans then noticed two more bandits coming up on his left side, and with that, he pulled back on the reins and stopped the horses pulling the stagecoach. Captain John Hans yelled out to the bandits, we ain't packing nothing valuable today, boys. No money box on this trip. Looks like the folks have plumb run out of money back home. Shut up, a big red beard man instructed the captain. As the bandits popped the cover to the boot and pulled out just two of those mailbags. Yep, those two mailbags. Then the big red bearded man told Hans, go on and get now. Hans a bit puzzled that the passengers were not robbed and only two damn mailbags were taken. Didn't make sense to him. Nonetheless, back on the road they went, rolling into, rolling into Flagstaff about 5 p.m. that afternoon. This time, Flagstaff, Arizona, was just a few stores, saloons, and a dozen old shacks put together. As the passengers disembarked the stagecoach, they began to tell the strange holdup. More and more spectators gathered around to hear the story from those who were on board. Then, the depot agent pulled Hans to the side and inquired, Is it true, John? Hans replied, Yep, five bad guys took a couple of mail sacks off of us. Some folks ain't going to get their mail today. No biggie, just some mail, right? The agent spit out, Come in here right now. As he was shaking nervously, Hans followed behind him into the office where the town marshal came to join them. Those two bags, paused the agent while he gritted his teeth, they contained a fortune in gold and silver that was coming from Albuquerque's bank to the San Francisco bank. It was packed in two five-gallon oak whiskey kegs and put into bags wrapped with old newspapers. Hans just shook his head and said, How come it wasn't in a regular iron box? A damn fool stunt, if you ask me, he said. Turns out the boys over there at Wells Fargo planned to fool the outlaws by disguising the gold and silver this way. There had been way too many robberies along the line lately, and more than $100,000 were in those two whiskey kegs. Hans scratched his chin and mumbled, Seems like somebody had information right from the feed box. They knew which bags to take. The captain continued with the description of the five bandits and the location of the robbery had occurred. A posse of citizens was organized and led out by the marshal that afternoon. They never did find the bandits and a few days later came back into town. When questioned why Hans didn't just pull his gun and take those bandits out, he replied, Ha! <laughs> I only had four bullets and there were five of them sons of bitches. Most of the gold and silver was in the form of small bars, and each keg had rolls of gold coin and silver coins in them. The Wells Fargo agents were very upset over the failure of what they considered to be a clever scheme to evade the bandits. They howled about the loss of nearly $125,000, and demands were made upon the Army at several territorial forts to do something about the lawlessness in northern Arizona. The Army did take some action. A patrol of the 6th U.S. Cavalry of Company D from Fort Apache, under the command of Captain E.C. Henteg. With his two Indian scouts, they managed to pick up the robber's trail. The Army Indian scouts reported locating a log cabin just ahead in the heavy timber, with five men with saddled horses next to a pole corral. The Army captain spotted a burly man with a thick red beard. This satisfied him that these were the men, indeed, were the robbers. He called for his troopers to move forward. The five bandits were in the crowd, prepping to mount, when the old blue-clad troopers dashed down upon them. The bandits opened fire on the troopers, and the troopers returned fire, and within a few minutes, all five of them bandits lay in their own blood and dead. 
The bandits' bodies were shoveled into a shallow hole, the horses and equipment gathered up, and the cabin searched. That night, the patrol made its way back to Flagstaff. When they arrived, the Wells Fargo agents asked about the kegs of loot, and the Army captain could only say that nothing whatsoever then was found. The next year, the Army captain Haytag, well, he'd be killed in that battle of Civic at the hands of the Apaches. Now, we've talked about this in other battles of the Apaches of Central Arizona, here on the Old West Traveler, and there's a link up above there if you want to check out one of those videos. Well, now let's get back to the story here. The next day, a dozen men rode out to the Vet Spring searching for the gold and silver bars. They asked old Captain Hans to go with them and help dig up the bodies. He identified them all as the men who had robbed the stagecoach. Still, no light ever came to the missing kegs. No paperwork was found on the bodies, and the cavalry just assumed the men had been strangers to Arizona and were there especially to pull off the holdup with the insider information on those mailbags. For years afterwards, folks would hear the tale and come to Flagstaff and try to find those missing kegs and gold and silver. Now this story does come from Mr. John Hans, and that means you got to take only bits and pieces of this tale to heart. You see, old Hans wound up being hired by a large hotel company in the Grand Canyon area to bring in tourists and gold seekers. Well, you see, Hans had a way of telling stories that every time he told a story, yep, that story wasn't quite the same each time he told it, if you're catching what I'm putting down. Thus, the question has to be asked, if John Hans was in on the gig or just an innocent stagecoach man? He'd passed away in 1919 and is buried at the Grand Canyon Pioneer Cemetery. Maybe you might get lucky and find that $125,000 in gold, which today we worth about $3.6 million. Well, thank you for listening to today's Old West story. Please take a moment and subscribe to my channel, and I would appreciate it if you would share this video with others to help keep the Old West alive for future generations. Until next time.